Hi guys and welcome. My name is Sarah Soderlund or Paranormal Sarah as you might know me and we finally made it to March. So I am tuning in here. I've got my cheat sheet all ready to go for you guys. Um, I think that uh, for those of you who are in the Gypsy Tribe, who join my newsletter, who are a part of the membership, who kind of work with me one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's through intuition or through classes, you're kind of familiar with what it is that we do here in the forecast. Now, it's a little mix of psychic intuition, um, generalization, uh, psychology, power of suggestion, collective consciousness, whatever your spirituality or belief system might be. One of the things I do love is astrology. I love being able to go outside and look at the sky to be able to see these huge bodies in our galaxy and to know that we influence each other, we affect one another, and that I can use some of these in my journal. I can plot things by the moon. I can plot things by Jupiter. I can plot things by Mercury. It's very helpful, I think, for anyone who struggles with um, anxiety or loneliness, even especially this time of year. You can sit back and connect with your ancestors. You can read some amazing stories, uh, mythology, deities from what these months, what these moments, and what astrological planets mean and you don't feel so alone. So to know that we are all doing this together is kind of fun and exciting, and I am going to give you my March cheat sheet right now. So get your pens and pencils ready. I'm gonna try not to talk too fast, but I'm going to give you some of these general themes, what to expect, what to kind of put down in your journal, what to keep your eye open for. So what do we have? Well, today is the first of March and Venus enters Aquarius. So if you have sat down and you've kind of written down the planets, you've You've looked at your own birth chart, maybe you have an idea, and if you haven't, contact me, we can do that. But you have an idea of what Venus, sensuality, right, means when it enters into Aquarius, into Aquarius, Aquarius. It basically means that people are going to start feeling kind of frisky. They're going to feel adventurous. They're going to want to be grabbing butts on the subway. It's unconventional love, erotic love, unique love, sensuality. It's Venus. All of those things that um, get us in touch with not just sexiness, but the intimate sides of our confidence, our identity, and some of those things as they move into this uh, more frisky energy, we're going to see that, which is interesting because at the end of the month, that's going to change. Um, so consider that for today and use that, if you will, or be aware of it. And then on the 5th, so four days from now, right, boom, 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 Mercury is going to go retrograde. Dun, dun, dun. What does that mean? I know everyone always freaks out when they hear that. Mercury's retrograde. Mercury. Um, what does that mean? Well, Mercury is our communication. You know, we associate that with our throat chakra, uh, and Mercury is. <sighs> People tend to struggle communicating what it is that they're trying to get across, and so those miscommunications can cause conflict. They can cause stress. They can cause anxiety, and so that's I think why people usually freak out when things go Mercury into retrograde. Uh, but it doesn't last so long, and we can use it if we know how. Now, how do we use it? How do we use it? Well, Mercury is going to go retrograde, which means people are going to want to increase their privacy. They're going to want to kind of reduce this fogginess that we have felt through February. Through as the snow is falling and the weather's doing weird things, we're kind of feeling this, I need to journal. I need to be by myself. I need to just kind of shut in and I need to just think some things through. So if you're in a relationship or you're worried, maybe you're paranoid that this person's, um, disconnecting from you or ignoring you. People are going to naturally be um, a little bit more about thinking. It's almost, if you can imagine this flow of communication going through our throat chakra, it's going to slow like the early spring molasses coming out of a tree. We're like tapping it for maple syrup, right? And it's just slowly coming out. So people are going to increase their privacy in hopes to reduce their confusion. And if you use this and understand, you know, don't freak out when people go in their little space, then you can use it and be like, oh, okay, I, I, I can do this too. And I can use this energy to do this too. And then on the sixth, Uranus is going to enter Taurus. Now, March is the month for 
Taurus. We're seeing a lot of things um, happen. Not so much as May. The month of May, the Taurus is going to have like the best year ever. Um, but Uranus is going to go into Taurus and this is transit until 2026. Uranus is, I, I usually call Uranus like my Winona writer. It's just crazy. It's just like, who knows what it's doing. It's kind of the surprise popping out of the closet. Who knows what it's going to deliver. But Uranus is stubborn and Uranus teaches us that we can persevere, that we can have these crazy orbits and we can do weird things and we can be out of sight, out of mind for almost a decade or more and yet still have an identity connected to freedom and we can have a, a, a piece of us that can feel liberated in the long term of a plan. Like, I'm going to retire in 17 years, and as long as I save up, that'll be the time that I plan this trip. It's almost when Uranus does this, it's this stubborn energy that we're going to continue doing something. We're going to do it. We're going to stick to it, and we're going to be in it in the long run. And this can be something that's a, a deep internal thing, something that is very inherent to someone's identity. You know, if I've always wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader or whatever that someone might really be wanting to do, this might be that time that they feel this drive to want to um, do those things and they're going to be stubborn about it. And one of the, the things that's unique about it is that whatever actions are kind of taken here in this next month, it's going to initiate a particular set of patterns that is going to follow us until 2026 when that transit changes. Um, and then also the sixth, so this is really important. Uh, the new moon. We love the new moon, right? Which is everywhere. New moon! Uh, the new moon is in Pisces, which is very spiritual. It's going to give us this push, the final push. I think of it as almost like childbirth. The final push to be alone in prayer, be alone in our thoughts, be alone in meditation. New moon, obviously you go out and the moon is dark. There isn't anything there. It's not the big, bright, full super moon that we just went through last month. Instead, it's dark and everything is covered. And, you know, much of the United States right now, many parts of the world are going through some extreme weather conditions or different weather conditions than they're used to. So people are kind of shacked up inside. It's going to be a really great energy to have and that the universe is assisting us for this spiritual push to go inwards. Uh, outside physically, resources minimalizing. Uh, this is, it's in harmony with what's naturally happening. So it's okay to do that. It's okay to feel that reluctancy to want to go out and be very social um, because right now is that time the new moon allows us to do a lot of introspection, right? Animals burrow up, things kind of shut down. The predators have to be on their extra alert because it's extra dark outside. And metaphorically, that's kind of what it's like in the universe, right? And so this is going to be a thought about this month's coming of a big push of energy and the introspection. I'm hoping you will have the opportunity to think about clearing this fog and think about the process of being alone, what it means to be alone. If you are struggling with codependency, if you are struggling with grief, whatever it is that are the monsters inside of you, and we all have them. Sometimes to fight them, to combat them after decades of maybe addiction or neglect or uh, projection or avoidance, these things that we have prolonged and let sit and stew, uh, sometimes when we go into the alone, that's when we have to deal with those things, and that is a good thing, okay? So, be alone. Create your home, work on your space, work on your mind space, and work on your physical safe space. When we think about grounding ourselves spiritually and mentally and emotionally, a lot of times reducing clutter, minimizing things, that whole, if it does not give you joy movement, maybe you can jump on that bandwagon because there is something to that, that what surrounds us reminds us of our present time. And if we're trying to be mindful and we're trying to be in the present moment and the present moment looks kind of shitty, then we're, we might not want to be going there. So common sense tells us clean up, fix up our space, fix up our whatever it is that we can do to feel a little better about ourselves and sit with ourselves and think about how we can fine tune what it is we're working on this year. Think back to our resolutions, think back to our goals um, and get ready because after this little shut-in time, Things are going to change and they are going to, <laughs> they are going to change 
fast. So what's happening? Um, I want you to take note of the 13th. Now this is kind of the middle of the month, right? We're thinking of the Ides of March have passed and Jupiter was semi-sextile Pluto on the 7th and we had this kind of lull of energy as we're sitting alone. Then on the 13th, the sun, the sun, the sun goes into Pisces. It's sextile Pluto and Capricorn. What the heck does this mean? Well, it's going to put a spotlight on certain power plays. As we've watched individuals kind of be shut into a corner, if you are sitting alone and meditating, which most of us are going to be pushed to do anyway, so like it or not, if you didn't like it and the universe put you in the corner and put you in a dunce hat and you're pissed and you've been there and you're throwing a little hissy fit, this is when power plays, people are going to react. People are going to start biting and nipping and getting short. And, you know, Mercury is still retrograde, so they're kind of struggling to deal with this. And we're going to see on the 14th, Mars goes into Taurus, okay? On the 14th, the sun goes Pisces, Mercury, and Pisces. Things start shifting more. Pisces is all about fluidity and emotion, high emotions, okay? So we're seeing all of these planets move with a lot of intention for lifting us up and down and making us want to feel these things. And so then on the 15th, Mercury and Pisces, Jupiter and Sagittarius, 16th, Mercury and Pisces, sextile Pluto and Capricorn, 17th, Mercury and Pisces, sextile Mars and Taurus. If you're not sure what all that means to you, it's going to be very specific to your birth chart. It's going to be specific to how you respond to those planetary movements. But what I can tell you is that when all of these shifts are happening, boom, 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 undoubtedly people are going to feel them. And so how are people going to be responding to a rock in the boat when they have been on the boat, uh, shut in with cabin fever for a long time? <sighs> And then what is the universe going to do to us with all of that? Shake it a little more. Shake it a little more. And she's going to give us a full moon on the 20th. The full moon on the 20th, the sun enters out of Pisces into Aries. The sun is what is nourishing you. The sun is the core of your being. The sun is what is going to be igniting your passions. These things that we've thought about, we've been meditating over, right? And then the full moon is going to greet us at zero degrees. What does that mean? Zero degrees is the perfect starting point. Zero degrees is the perfect platform for any new beginning, a new project, a new move, a spring forward. There's going to be relationship changes. Obviously, after this kind of chaotic, tumultuous time, we land in this new space. Ah! It's a new beginning, the full moon in Libra. Libra is opposites attract. Opposites attract. You like the moon. I like that. You know what song I'm talking about. And that's what I'm going to be singing on uh, the full moon on the 20th. Because as this happens, we're going to feel these driving changes shift. Relationships are going to shift. We are going to feel our self shift. We're going to feel uh, a driving change to, you know what? I've been thinking about it for a long time. And you have. And the universe has been assisting you in this. And I've seen people now completely call themselves toxic, uh, everybody being dramatic. I've determined who I want to keep in my life. I've purged. I've minimalized. I've done all this work on the 20th for this new beginning, this new project. You are at the perfect point. Hopefully you've used these energies. You've not fought them. That now you are at this perfect springboard for the new beginning that you've been wanting to do. These new projects that you've been kind of stewing over. It is the perfect time on the 20th for this new moon or this full moon in Libra to manifest, to manifest and get crazy. Think about opposites. Think about opposing viewpoints. Think about it as constructive criticism to kind of fine tune and cut down and carve away the things that are not useful so that this beginning can be the most efficient that it can be. And then the very next day, the 21st, now we're in the very celebratory time. Naturalists all over the planet, natural witches everywhere. Titties out. It gets crazy because it is the spring equinox. Um, Mars goes into Taurus, Pluto and Capricorn, Mercury and Pisces, sextile Saturn and Capricorn, and Venus and Aquarius, sextile Jupiter and Sagittarius, and Venus squares Mars. Boom. All this stuff happens. So we're seeing... Um, the aggression and assertiveness part of us being very stubborn, Pluto going into Capricorn, um, Mercury, so our communication uh, shifting again to more emotional, intuitive, 
kind of unconscious things that we've been thinking coming to the surface. Saturn is our limits, our guidelines. It's going into Capricorn. We all know the Capricorn energies and generalizations. So what does that say about the boundaries that we're going to be setting for ourselves and how people are likely going to be stepping over those? And then the 21st, the spring equinox, we're all celebrating Venus and Aquarius. Venus and Aquarius. So Venus entered into Aquarius on the 1st. And now it's slowly going to start moving its sextile Jupiter and Sagittarius, and Venus is going to start squaring Mars. And as we see this happen, um, our sensuality, our confidence, our, even some of our identity are, is going to start shifting. We've now started these new beginnings, or we didn't, and everyone around us did. We start feeling our sensuality change. Um, on the 24th, Jupiter is going to go into a true node. Now, what the heck does that mean? That's, go again, going to be very subjective to your birth chart. So if that's something that you'd be interested in exploring, contact me or any other of the amazing um, astrologers that I work with. But something to note is on the 26th of March. So this is like uh, almost a week after St. Patrick's Day. Everyone, their, their hangover is gone. On the 26th, Venus enters Pisces. Um, this is going to be a really big movement for those people who are still struggling with the emotional hangover of that big shift starting on the 13th when all of those planets started mixing and mingling and the emotions were on high and the Mercury was retrograde so we were struggling to communicate it and we were feeling very alone and isolated both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Then we see on the 26th that Venus goes into Pisces and we feel this yearning to forgive people, people that effed up during that shift or said things they didn't mean. We are going to want to empathize. Our affections are going to go from being the freaky deaky like they were on the first to being a lot more shy and reserved and casual. We're going to see that forgiveness is very attractive. Almost everything in our being wants to forgive. We're going to notice friends, people around us, support systems going, yeah, I know they always screw me over, but... So we need to think about this high empathy, this high emotion, Venus and Pisces, and what that says about our logic. Uh-oh, hold on one second. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. This is real life, guys. So you know when you book a reading, sometimes people ask how I got to doing the audio sessions rather than, um, I call it the skeptical uh, version because there's no suggestion, but the audio files allow me to pause if I need because I'm a mom. So I'm a real person and I birthed children and they are real and they um, interrupt sometimes. That's just how it is. So anyway, back to the action, back to the astrology action. And we were at the 26th, which is all about this feelings of forgiveness. And it might be slightly annoying because for those people who are highly logical, analytical, rational, they're going to be like, but he stole your car and your hammer and this, and that, and your underwear. People are like, yeah, I know, but I don't know. It's like this overwhelming feeling to want to forgive. And it can be a very, very good thing. It can be really good for healing, sewing up any loose ends for things that were, happened during that Mercury retrograde as it's slowly coming back direct. And you can use that, but also be aware to Libra, the full moon, unconsciously weigh things. And understand that we don't want to go too far down the spectrum. We want to have a good balance, okay? So then on the 28th, Mercury goes direct. Boom. And so we're feeling excited again. We're feeling like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I've got my mouth back. I've got my tongue back. I've got my purpose back. Um, and, oh, there's somebody calling me. They're calling me. Uh, I'll have to take that in a second. And uh, working as a case manager, I get calls all the time. I will have to return that. Uh, but i got to get this done. Um, so Mercury is going to go direct and we are going to feel like, okay, I can communicate again. I can talk again. I can deliver. This is when we want to deliver our speech. This is when we want to give our apology. This is when we want to set our intentions and say, listen, during the full moon, I was doing this. Uh, that was on the 20th. It's been eight days and now I want to talk about it. Now I want to get it out. Now I want to tell you about this new project I've been thinking about. This is with, um, some of these energies in Pisces, it's going to be high emotions. We're going to get crazy intuitive dreams. We're going to feel connections with people. We're going to feel like we can listen and communicate creatively. Everyone's going to be like on the best Indica ever. They're going to be like, oh yeah, you know what? That's a great idea. 
So we need to be careful that we don't have too many Matthew McConaughey's around us on the yes train and that we don't make any major life decisions that could ripple out in a wrong way because we just were dreaming too much. We're thinking, we're like, and then this would happen, and then this would happen, and then this would happen. And people just like, they get with you, you get so excited and you get so emotional and people are just really excited, but we, we aren't as logical. So... We need to be aware that on the 28th, as we approach the last quarter, we're looking up at the moon and we're like, okay, I see what's going on. I know what's happening. I remember Paranormal Sarah telling me that this is where Mercury is going to go direct. People are going to start calling me. And they call on you when Mercury goes direct. You're going to start hearing messages, apologies, people coming back. People come back. People come back. People want to touch base with you. Okay, this is the good time to do correspondence, but also keep in mind that because everyone is doing correspondence, that if you send out your message and then you're like, it's been 21 minutes and I've not heard anything. And I know that they read it. Don't get crazy. Don't get emotional, right? Don't let Pisces get the best of you because the likelihood is that there's a swarm of correspondence for everybody and everybody's like, whoa, okay, let's take a second. Now on the 31st of March, this is the end of the month. The end of the month, we made it. Hopefully you made it. Hopefully you made it through St. Patrick's Day. Hopefully you made it through the Ides of March. Hopefully you made it through what else do we got going that is just crazy that we don't even, that I didn't even mention about in astrology? Well, we got Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, Ash Wednesday happening the 5th, 6th, and 7th. I'm going to be traveling to Kansas City. I'm going to be driving through four different states. I'm going to be doing lectures, book signings, and you're going to see me doing live readings, galleries, and photo shoots in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, here it comes. And then um, the Vernal Equinox, which is Everybody dancing naked under the moon. Got to get my broomstick out. Got to go fly across the moon and do that kind of stuff. Um, and then one of my beautiful boys is turning five, uh, which is right around the vernal um, equinox. He's an equinox, a baby. And then, you know, we just got little things like waffle day, spinach day, um, smoke and mirrors day. And on the 30th, it's I'm in control day. And they take... Uh, Mental health awareness suggests you go and take a walk in the park on the 31st. Hopefully that groundhog that's on my shit list didn't get taken out and he made it and that everything thawed and spring will have sprung. And by the end of the month, it's going to fly by that we will all be seeing a little bit of green. Hopefully you guys are starting your tomatoes. You're starting your plants. The full moon is going to be a really great time. What, what day was that? The 20th in Libra? Opposites attract? That's right. Hopefully it's an, a good opportunity for you to get out your seeds. They calling me again on the 20th talking about that Mercury going uh, uh, direct. Um, so here we go. I want you guys to let me know what your new projects are. I want you to comment below what new things you're working on. Definitely let me know if you're in Kansas City. Let me know if you're in Iowa, if you're in Kansas, if you're in Missouri, if you're in Minnesota, if you're in any of those surrounding areas, you want to come out and meet me or you want to book for a private session or intuitive workshop, let me know. And I do hope to hear from you guys. Don't forget, catch me every Tuesday night on Facebook for free live readings. And if you would like a personal reading, you can do that. You can reach me. You can email me directly. Find me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you like to stalk. And that's what I do. Or you can just go to paranormalsarah.com. So you guys, I hope to see you there. And don't forget, use these podcasts. Use astrology. Let it work for you. And um, let me know how you guys feel whenever you have this extra tool in your utility belt, in your spiritual tool belt. I think that astrology can be very helpful. And I hope that you will find it helpful too. And that you will join me next.